Hello and welcome to Premier Scene, I'm Claire Bueno and today we return to the 90s as Sasha Bennett brings us the true story of the rise and fall of the notorious Essex Boys in his latest feature, Bonded by Blood. Here we are. It's nearly over. A year's worth of work all in 90 minutes. <laughs> so tell us more then about Bondy by Blood. Um, well, it's based on a true story, obviously, that happened about 15 years ago now. Uh, um, uh, basically, the Essex drug and gangland. Um, and um, this has been turned into sort of a, a very tight thriller that um, hopefully people will watch and enjoy as a movie as well as kind of going, oh, blimey, that actually really did happen. So how does a really nice guy get involved in making a film about gangsters, for God's sake? <laughs> I have no idea. No, I just had an interview, got put up for the job, and uh, they, the producers, Terry um, and AJ just there, just sort of liked my take on it. And because it was make or break in the interview, and I kind of said that I wanted it to look like a movie as opposed to being looking completely realistic. So I put the boys in suits, giving them nice cars, nice houses. Whereas in fact, in real life, they always wore denim, drove a Granada, and lived in a sort of a mid-terrace house. But um, so that my one thing was always to make sure that the audience had their money's worth when they spend 10 quid on a cinema ticket. And the, when you made Tuesday, which was your concept, and you directed and wrote that, <coughs> excuse me, what was it like directing this in comparison? Um, yeah, I'd, I'd inherited a script that had been written by someone else, and then I sort of reworked it how I, and my, myself and the actors sort of wanted it a bit more streamlined, a bit more character-based. Um, it was a bit meandering to begin with, because true life doesn't fit into a 90-minute structure. Um, so that was an interesting thing, uh, and also having never done a true story before, finding the sort of parameters that where you go, oh, naturally, what would happen now is, you can't do that, because that didn't actually happen in real life. So. That was interesting. Uh, uh, sometimes a problem because you're going, oh, if only. <laughs> but then in other times it was kind of like, oh, wow, that's something I could never have dreamt up. And, uh, and yet it's, it's real. Also, it's said to be quite violent. And people always kind of address that, oh, it must be really hard for the actor. But how hard is it for the director? Um, it is violent, but only because it, the things that happened were violent. Um, what I didn't do is make a choice of uh, glamorizing it and shooting it in slow motion and 50 different angles so it looked really exciting and sexy um, and once I'd made that decision then the violent aspect of it was quite straightforward it was like like for instance the murders happened in about 10 seconds flat so we shot them as a 10 second scene and uh, that was great because then it wasn't like oh where can I put the camera where can I do it was very straightforward then so um, yeah the violence aspect was it's part of the story, so you had to sort of pitch it either. Like I say, you can glamorise it and make it a Hollywood action movie, or you can do it the way we did, which is just kind of go, hey, look, guns kill, and, and that's look, they're not getting up from this one. And also, very lastly, before you can go on and get interviewed by <laughs> anybody else, the, the tunes, are we going to get some great tunes in this? Yes, we got very lucky. Uh, a guy called Jason Kay is one of the uh, composers, and he was a big DJ in the 90s. So. He managed to source a lot of tracks, and in fact, he had a sort of a number two single that is in the, in the soundtrack as well. So, there'll be if you grew up in that time and were dancing, then you'll recognise quite a few of the tunes in there. So, um, who knows? Maybe an album will come out as well. You want to bring drugs into this country? I'm your man. I'm in. Oh, what enticed you to go for it again and make Bonded by Blood? Um, well, I think after Rise of the Foot Soldier, a lot of people. Um, Want to see a film just about the Essex boys, so um, that's kind of what spurred me on to do it. And um, this film is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the fucking truth. So <laughs> that's why we made it. Um, obviously, as we've said, it's based on the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Um, but were you ever sort of tempted to make it into a documentary-style film? Not really, no. No, we just wanted to. We literally looked at Rise of the Foot Soldier, and we decided we wanted to make it a little bit more Hollywood, a little bit more glamorous, a little bit more funny. So yeah, we didn't have all the same people in it again. We we got some new actors in, and um, you know a lot of people have said that the film you know stands up. You know it's not Rise of the Foot Soldier too. It's just Bonded by Blood. And it's a good movie. So please about it. What was it like coming back to your character? Well, it was better without the wig. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was good. I mean, you know, I enjoyed it, and it was it was a lot of hard work. But you know, it's paid off, and um, I'm really pleased with the movie. And and, and it comes out Friday, and hopefully everyone's going to go and see it. We're laughing at your time. Like you're from my part of the world, the Midlands. 
Yes. <laughs> Is that all you're going to say? All right. Yeah, Birmingham. Yes. Birmingham. Yeah, me too. Fine town. Oh, it is, and some lovely people. Essex. Less crime in Birmingham than Essex. Move to Birmingham. <laughs> How do you feel about your book being adapted um, into a film? Doing a really good job of it. Fantastic. Really pleased. Were you, did you have any reservations? Um, yeah. Um, not really into people glorifying crime, and uh, I don't think they have in this film. So really pleased with it. Really. Yeah. yeah. Did you? Were you able to work closely with the crew? He's my new boyfriend. <laughs> no, yes, um, with Sasha, who's fantastic. The moment he starts saying, I'm a dead man, that's the moment he becomes a dead man. How are you doing? Really, really, really good. I mean, I'll just, just guess the time of year. Well, you can't call now he's in my film, and I think there's four actors in his film from my own film, you know what I mean? Superb. Yeah, so I'm really proud, you know, that a lot of the actors will basically. All, all the British films you're going to see over the next two or three years are going to contain actors from the cast film, you know? Yeah, no, exactly. So over the moon. And the, and, the, and the director, John S. Baird, who made my film, watch out for him. There's some big announcements about to come out over the next month. And uh, he's, he's, he's going to make a really big film, an Irving Welsh film, you know? Well, I should look out for that. I should... yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Cass. Listen, take care. Thanks. All the best. Cheers. Through you to the, the part here of uh, Pat Tate. Um, it's an interesting story for me. I kind of grew up uh, around the uh, in, in that era as well, and I, and I know a few of the likely lads who I met. Funny enough, it's quite uh, weird. I met Pat and Tony and Craig. Just shook their hands out because I, was, I knew Nigel Ben and stuff and the people around them. But I just think it's a story that needs to be told correctly. I think um, there's been uh, one film. Everyone's saying there's two films. Rise of the Foot Soldier wasn't exa wasn't. It was about Carlton Leach, which is a friend of mine, and that was about his life story. And um, uh, Sean Bean did uh, the Essex Boys, which was mainly fiction. But this book is uh, this film is uh, adapted by Bernard O'Mahony's book called Bonnie by Blood, which Bernard was. Nobody really knows the true story of what happened. Everybody knows their life story, the end, their demise. Nobody really knows about. But Bernard O'Mahony was 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 very close to him. He was their right hand man, their henchman. Call it what you want. He worked for them for years. He watched their rise from them being good guys to bad guys, and then he was there for their demise. So I think this book is uh, this film is is the closest story we can really get to the Essex Boys story, which is a phenomenon which people really you know are interested about. And I think hopefully we can put the lid on it with with this story. So I think, do you think you owe it to the people that are deceased and some of the people that kind of uh, what would you say? Families the, and friends. The, well, families and friends, and also the victims to yeah, tell this yeah. story properly. Yeah, yeah. You know what it is for the victims of these people. It, I don't really want to portray or let people relive what happened to these people. I mean, there's this was probably one of the hardest jobs I've ever had to do because as an actor, it's ink on a page. You bring it to life and you develop the characters. But this is a true life character I'm playing. So, I mean, sometimes we're filming the domestic violence that he put his wife through and. Uh, the torture stuff that he did to innocent people. When I was actually doing it, it, it was really tough to do and it was harder because when you're doing it, you, you kind of sit back and think, somebody actually endured this. Somebody actually went through this. So for that side of it, no, to be honest. There's, there's the, the poor Leah Betts. There's, there's issues with the Leah Betts stuff, which I tried to swerve away from within the script and within that character. A lot of it I took out because I didn't think it was fair to you know, discuss it, dramatise it as if it's... Something and you know, on top of anything, I've, I do play a, a lot of villain roles, and I've done the Football Factory, I've done Cassie's movie, and I've played a lot of real life characters. And I don't want it for one minute to be a glamorization of, of, of villainy and, and what these guys done. It, I want it to hopefully be a deterrent so people can look at it and go, Jesus Christ, you know, this is this is what happened. Do it! We're an evening we've had here at Premier Scene as we got to interview Tam Hassan, Terry Stone and the hugely talented Sasha Bennett at the world premiere of their film, Bonded by Blood.